What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another legal video. No hurricane talk or explanation about what's happening. No updates here. We are back in the office today, um, and we're going to be taking a look at Brian Koberger's new scheduling order. All the new deadlines. We're going to take a look at the fast and furious motions that are already coming in from October 9th and October 10th and why they're coming in. There's going to be fights about the death penalty. There's going to be all sorts of things happening fast and furious, but at the same time, there's been quite a large delay in when this trial is going to be beginning. We'll talk about how we think that's going to affect the jury. Let me know what you think it's going to affect the process. Like it's going to be more jurors, less jurors that are going to be apt to sit on this jury for the many months it is, it is scheduled for. So let me know in the comment section. Make sure you guys hit the like button and let's get to it. So the court wasn't real excited about a summer trial date. So at the last hearing that we watched together with this new judge, he said he was either going to move it up to May of 2025, which would be about six, seven months from now, or back to, I think he said, August or September, which is you know almost a year from now. So we're going to see what he does and we're going to see how it affects the rest of the deadlines. Any prior scheduling order is hereby vacated. The following schedule will govern the pretrial matters outlined herein and the trial in this case. So it's important to make sure he is vacating any prior orders because if there was any deadline in a prior order that conflicts with this order, then the lawyers might not know which deadline to keep. And that would be unnecessary motions and potential hearings and a waste of time. Additionally, if there is anything mentioned in the prior order that is not mentioned in this order, the lawyers may think, well, do we still have to abide by those deadlines? Or are we missing a deadline now? Judge, you don't have a discovery cutoff or whatever it may be if he left something out of this order. Well, all of those prior deadlines are vacated. So they're gone. You can't file any motions to compel or motions for sanctions based on any prior scheduling order. So it's very important to vacate the order right at the top. All right, first, voir dire and trial setting. So jury questionnaires will be administered approximately redacted date, which I found interesting, right? I think they're still trying to keep some of this under wraps, some of this sealed. They don't want to poison the jury pool. They know there's a lot of interest already in the case. More than 50% of people in Ada County, I think, had already kind of heard about the case or know about the case. Some even made prejudgments on the case. So they don't want to necessarily let people know. They could be doing it right now. They could be doing it in May. They could be doing it in June. Or they could be doing it in July. I think July might be too late. But voir dire, meaning jury selection, is going to start on July 30th, 2025 at 9 a.m. So the big dates that were thrown out there were August 11th, which is the trial date when the trial is actually going to start. But this gives them, I believe, two weeks of jury selection from July 30th to August 11th. They're going to be picking the jury, which I think is smart. Give a lot of time because as we're seeing with Sarah Boone, as we've seen with some other trials, just because jury selection starts does not mean the trial starts. There could still be motions. There could still be open ends that need to be tied up. Loose ends, I guess is what they call that, that need to be tied up. There could still be arguments. There could even still be depositions going on if there's late disclosures or if an expert passes away, which has already happened in this case. But stuff pops up and stuff happens. But jury selection is going to start on July 30th. So that's when we're going to get our first start to kind of this case kicking into gear. But the actual jury trial will start on August 11th and run through November 7th with the inclusion of the penalty phase if necessary. So if there's no penalty phase, probably ends end of October. So that means it's probably, you know, two and a half months, two, two and a half months if there's no penalty phase, but basically three months if there is a penalty phase. Trial will begin each day at 11, at 8.30 a.m. and conclude at approximately 3.30 p.m. with a lunch break of approximately 45 minutes. So that's only basically six hour days of, tri of a trial. It's not long, not overbearing. If they went till 5.30 every day, maybe they could shave a couple weeks off. But with the trial this long, I understand. And it's a public defender and state attorney, right? It's not a private attorney. So it's not quite the same as having to shut down your practice. Although Ann Taylor and multiple lawyers are only on this case. Although we'll see if her contract you know, gives them issues. But six hour days of trial um, is not overly laborious. So I would expect they'll have things in order. It also leaves open if there's any uh, loose ends again, any motions, anything that pops up during trial, which we know things are always popping up before trial. 
and during trial from 3.30 to 5.30, that gives everybody time to deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. Uh, the parties should be aware that some trial weeks may need to be shortened depending on other obligations of the court. Counsel should have sufficient evidence and witnesses ready to go each day to utilize the full day's trial schedule. So that gives me flashbacks of YSL. We got to let each other, each other know what's going on. Always have the next witness ready. Don't be done at 11 o'clock state and then say, that's all we got for today, judge. Don't do that. Have a witness ready. If not, have a backup witness ready. When you got two months of witnesses, basically, you're going to have a lot of witnesses. I know I think they have less than two months, but when you have a lot of witnesses, have backup witnesses, have other law enforcement people that'll be available, have other fact witnesses available um, to be backups. Don't just have one. Don't make us waste an afternoon. But there could be other obligations, maybe for the state, maybe for the defense. You need to take this day off, this morning off, this afternoon off. Judge may have to do it, a summary judgment motion, a pretrial hearing, case management conference, where the judge is going to have to break in the middle of the day or at the end of the day. That's going to happen. We know that too. When you have trials going on for this long, everybody's working. Everybody has a schedule. Everybody has other cases they're working, except maybe Ann Taylor. I'm not sure. I think she said this might be the only case she's working on. But um, for, for the most part, I'm sure there's people at the state attorney's office where this is the only case they're working on. But for the most part, we're going to try to go 8.30 to, uh, to 3.30 for three months if it's necessary. And even three and a half months if you start back, because I bet they're going to be doing voir dire um, from 9 to 3.30 probably every day as well, or at least until they pick a panel. Now, uh, a lot of people had the question, let's say they pick a jury in two days. Are they just going to start the trial on August 5th uh, or August 6th, whatever, August 4th, whatever the Monday is before this, uh, if they get a jury picked? The answer is usually no. Usually they will start the trial on August 11th, the first day it's scheduled to commence, even if they have a jury picked by August 2nd. Now, again, that will give people time to prepare. It'll give the juries time to prepare, right? Because think about the jurors. They've got life. They've got families. They've got jobs that they've got to clear for potentially three months. And as far as a jury is concerned, they need to be available through November 7th. If it finishes early, great. But we can't have a juror that says, hey, on November 1st, I'm out regardless. Well, we can't have them on the jury because that's going to create a case problem. We don't want to create an appellate problem. We don't want to redo this. We don't want to have a mistrial before we're even done with the first one. So that's going to be a very big deal. And sometimes if we you know, have a jury pick by August 2nd, nine days helps everybody get everything in order. Again, helps the state get ready for their witnesses, the schedule, the order of proof, get it over to the defense. Defense can plan. Everybody can be ready. A final pretrial conference will be held on May 15th at 9 a.m. and continue to May 16th if necessary. Earlier status conferences may be requested of the court and or initiated by the court. So he's saying the final pretrial is going to be May 15th, which in my experience, that's pretty far in advance. May, June, July, August, that's three months before the trial starts. Usually it's like 30 days before the trial starts. So this lets me know the judge knows a lot is going to be happening beforehand, but he wants to push them to have everything done by May 15th, which I think was right around where he mentioned might be the earliest trial date where they could be starting trial. So he wants everything done as if we're going to trial on May 15th so that Anything that doesn't get done, which is inevitable in law, we have plenty of time, two and a half months before jury selection to get it all done so that we're not scrambling. We're not having big motions hearings. We're not uh, doing depositions at 3.30 p.m. after finishing trial for the day. So now let's look at some of the deadlines. Death penalty motions. The state's responses to the defense's motions challenging the death penalty are due October 10th, 2024. The defense's reply briefs are due October 24th, 2024. A hearing on the motions will be held on November 7th at 9 a.m. So one year before the trial is going to conclude, we're going to have these death penalty motions. So let's take a look real quick. Just to give you an idea of what this looks like. So this is the docket here. And uh, transfer the case, the 9th. Redacted order governing proceedings and notice of trial setting. So this is what we're reading right here on October 9th. So since then, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I think it's 21 or 22. I may have missed one. 21 or 22 things have been filed October 9th and October 10th. The vast majority of them dealing with the death penalty. A lots of states' objections to defendants' motion regarding the death penalty, regarding the objection, regarding the striking of all these aggravating factors, future danger, HAC, multiple victims, utter disregard. Um, they're trying to stop expert testimony again that deals with the death penalty. So all of this is coming in fast and furious right before the deadline. And I believe, if I remember correctly, which a lot's going on, so my, my memory could be fogged, but I believe they kept the same deadline in place for this and everybody already knew based on the initial hearing of the court that this was going to be the death penalty stuff 
deadline for the state defense is going to be in two weeks for them to respond to all of this. So they knew this was coming and you can see at every deadline, fast and furious filings come through. And this case is no different. All right, let's get back to the deadlines here. And you can, you can expect more of the same in some of these other deadlines. Discovery motions, the last day to file a motion to compel regarding any known uh, unresolved issues is November 14th. So you can, you better believe everybody, especially the defense is probably going to be filing a bunch of motions to compel right before November 14th. Responses are due December 6th. Replies are due December 20th. So it's the motion, the response, and the reply, and then a hearing on January 23rd, 9 a.m. Um, and continuing the next day. So you're noticing that some of these hearings, the court is giving two days, which is a long hearing because he expects a lot of issues. I don't know if his hearing time is only going to be 9 or 8.30 to 3.30 as well. That would be interesting. I don't see the necessity of that. You might as well try to get it done in one day if you can. Um, but January 23rd, 2025, we should have all discovery issues resolved. Do you think we're actually going to? I don't want to be a pessimist. I would bet against it. Uh, Rule 12 ICR motions, all motions governed by ICR 12, including motions to suppress evidence, are due by November 14th. Responses to those motions, December 6th. Replies, December 20th. Hearing, January 23rd. So all of these issues are going to be heard on January 23rd and 24th, if necessary. Motion in limine, like we're um, watching in Boone's case. Notices under IRE 404B, 608, 609. Uh, all of those are due February 10th, which the reason these are due after is we want all the discovery and all that information, other bad acts, things like that, all done by January 25th or 23rd, which gives about a month or a couple weeks before the motion is limiting. So it's no new evidence and new discovery. And we're like, judge, we would have done a motion to limiting if we would have known about this discovery. It's like, no, we got to know all this stuff so that then everybody can respond within time with their motions to limiting and all these other notices, 404B issues. Uh, so that's all due on February 10th. Then each other's uh, rep responses, March 3rd, and then the replies, March 14th. So again, you're noticing this trend, two weeks to respond two weeks to reply. Um, and then a hearing will be done on April 3rd and continuing the next day, if necessary, starting at 9 a.m. Discovery and expert disclosures. The deadline is January 9th. A list of experts the parties intend to call at trial, including a copy of the expert's report consistent with ICR 16B7 and a copy of the expert's curriculum vitae, which is like a resume, shall be disclosed to the opposing party as follows. The state's guilt phase, December 18th. So this is the first phase of the trial. Um, and then the penalty phase is the second phase. So guilt phase first. And then a month later is the defendant's guilt phase experts. Then the rebuttal guilt phase experts on uh, February 13th. State's penalty phase experts on January 27th. So this is the state's rebuttal. Uh, state's penalty phase on January 27th, which is after the defendant's guilt phase, which is interesting. Uh, the defendant's guilt phase, or sorry, yeah, penalty phase on March 31st. So instead of one month, they get two extra months. And then the state gets two extra months after that, because depending on who the defense puts forth, the state may have to grab more experts to rebut them. So that's why the state gets two different deadlines. their initial experts, then defense experts, then the state's rebuttal experts. So that's how all of it is set out. And again, now you're seeing how we're creeping towards that May 15th date. So if there's any delay, April 28th is the last deadline here. If there's any delay, May 15th is going to be tough to hit, right? Trial materials, proposed jury instructions, or sorry, questionnaires simultaneously filed, filed under seal by March 24th, 2025. So we know the jury questionnaires aren't going out before March, right? <laughs> They're not going out now. Objections are due March 31st. A sealed closed hearing on the proposed jury questionnaire will be held on April 16th. So they're going to probably start sending them out in May. Maybe after that pretrial conference. That's that's probably if I was going to guess. We have the pretrial conference. We see everything's in order. Then end of May or beginning of June, that gives two months to get jury questionnaires as much information as they possibly can in before July 30th when they actually start one year. Proposed jury instructions and trial briefs filed on April 14th. So what this is, you know what the jury instructions are. Trial brief is like, explain to us what you expect to happen in the trial. Here are the witnesses. Here are the days maybe that we expect the witnesses. Some judges make you do that, some don't. Here are the issues that are still open. Here's what we need from you, judge. Here's what we can expect that we're going to agree on. That's what the trial brief usually is, but explaining kind of what you're doing in the case. Proposed exhibit lists shall be filed on April 21st. Parties must identify ex uh, exhibits specifically and individually with each exhibit referenced by the Bates number used during discovery. Copies of exhibits shall be exchanged on April 21st. Exact exhibits must be affixed with an exhibit number. State shall use red exhibit stickers beginning with S1. The defense shall use blue stickers beginning with D1 to expedite trial. Each exhibit should be viewed by the opposing counsel prior to trial and a determination made as to whether an objection will be lodged against the exhibit and the basis for the objection identified. 
on or about May 14, 2025, the party shall jointly file a log spreadsheet identifying which exhibits are objected to and the base of the objection and those to which there's no objection. So this basically can look like a spreadsheet. Exhibit number one is pictures of this. Objection, either check yes or check no. If you check yes, what's the base of the objection? If you check no, then it's an agreed upon uh, exhibit and it's going to come into trial. The judge will look at that log, look at that spreadsheet, see what issues we have. This is all due on May 14th. So again, May 15th, we got to know what all of our issues are. We got to know which uh, exhibits are all coming in and we agree to, which exhibits are being objected to. We got to know all that by May 14th. So on May 15th, we can handle those issues. And basically, from the way it looks, they should be ready to go to trial outside of a jury by June 15th. Because if everything's done on May 15th, you should be ready for trial June 15th. So the court is leaving a lot of leeway here, basically the entire summer. And both of these teams have the entire summer cleared because before now, they kind of thought that's when the trial was going to be, right? So they should be ready by May 15th, good to go. And now let's just focus on getting a jury. Let's finish the questionnaires, get the questionnaires, get the questionnaires back in, analyze them and be ready to pick a jury on July 30th. You better believe both sides are going to have jury consultants, I would think. Guilt phase lay witnesses. Uh, they shall be filed under seal April 21st. Penalty phase lay witnesses shall be filed under seal May 5th. And again, the reason they're saying lay witnesses, we already had the expert disclosures above. The list of witnesses must identify specific individuals and not merely identify groups of people generally. Yeah, you can't say cops. You can't say vic victims. You can't say fact witnesses. You got to say this cop, this lay witness, this fact witness, whoever it may be, um, so that we can deal with any issues that may come up. And again, there could be potentially more motions in limine after the witness list. Sometimes that does happen. You didn't think this person was going to testify. Now that they are, they can't testify about this. Sometimes you can preempt that saying, you know, based on, you know, we have this cop's reports. He said he talked to this person. We're going to file a motion in limine before we even know the state's going to call him as a witness. And at that point, the state can respond and be like, we're not going to call Jane Doe as a witness anyways. So take her off. That's not something we have to deal with. So all of that is going to be happening now. I expect, you know, October through November 7th and even a little bit after to be focused on death penalty stuff. If the death penalty is going to get struck for any reason, if any of the aggravating factors aren't going to be allowed, I would be shocked if that's the case. Um, any expert issues that are popping up now, because we know more expert issues might come up later, we'll see. But I expect the state will be allowed to continue going for the death penalty. Um, but that's going to be a judge's decision on the hearing on November 7th. The defense is absolutely fighting it. And just like in Lori Vallow's case, that was a huge win for the defense to get the death penalty taken off the table, even though she lost. For Chad Daybell, death penalty was on the table, and they, in fact, gave him the death penalty. I would expect if Brian Koberg is convicted, he's going to get the death penalty. I don't know that he's going to be convicted. So I got to wait the, the guilt phase of the trial, presumed innocent. We don't know the first thing in this case, I don't think. I think there's tons of evidence we don't know about, arguments on both sides. So I am completely open going into this case. I know people think he's for sure guilty. There's some people think for sure this is a setup or not enough evidence or whatever it may be. I don't know the answers at this point because I know as a lawyer that I don't know much about the actual evidence in this case that's going to come out in trial. And I want to wait and see what's actually presented before we really start to get too far down one road or the other. But this is the period that's going to deal with the, uh, the guilt phase. Then we're going to get right to discovery, basically, because discovery is going to be cut off and done with discovery. Then we get into expert issues. Then we get to motion and liminies. Then we get to witness and exhibit list. That's kind of how the timeline is going to go. And then we're focused on the jury. Jury questionnaire, jury instructions, picking the jury. Until August 11th, when we actually get to start hearing each side's theories of the case, what happened, and how they can prove it or disprove it and poke holes in it. So how do we think this is going to go now that is outside of summer? From my perspective, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. I see issues no matter when, when you have, um, uh, when you have months of trial, it doesn't matter when you pick a jury, it's going to be a problem. That's the way I think about it. That's the way I see it. Um, but we'll kind of keep an eye on it, obviously answer your questions. If anything pops up that you guys have questions about, please let me know. Uh, but until then, that's all we got. So until next time, I am out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out The Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, The Lawyer You Know.